Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, did you know there's a skill many men never learn that ends up seriously limiting your professional success and satisfaction in your love and sex life? I put together a free guide to explain this unknown skill and give you exactly what you need to use it today. Get it by heading over to shanajamescoaching.com or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144. That's 44144. You'll also get access to Man Alive outtakes, raw footage, and bonus videos you can only get there. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to be here today with an amazing couple who we're going to explore swinging. And for those of you who don't know what swinging is, we're going to get into exactly what it is. But, you know, in, in my perspective, we in our culture, in this kind of modern Western culture, are not given very many examples of how to do relationship, right? It's a lot of, you know, monogamous, lifelong relationship, and yet then the divorce rate is at an all-time high and people are less satisfied than ever. So I'm really excited to bring you Carol and David today of The Sexy Lifestyle to have this conversation about some some other options and why we might choose them in a relationship. So welcome, Carol and David. Hi, Shana. How are you? Hey, Shana. Great to hear talk to you again. Great. So, right, I was just on their podcast. Uh, I don't know what the timing will be like when this comes out versus that one came out, but uh, you they'll, they'll find timing. it on your website or on our website. Yeah, yeah, you can listen to that one as well. So let me give them an intro before we dive in, and then we're going to get to it. Carol and David are a strong, committed couple. So like I said, they have their own radio show, The Sexy Lifestyle, and they're passionate about making their relationship the best it can be. And they're also experts on the swinging lifestyle and real life, real life, I love that, real life swingers themselves. So they're open-minded. This will become very clear very soon. They're fun-loving. They're a couple with a really sexy, you know, energetic vibe. And they're applying their sexy lifestyle strategies to their own couple. So they've built and strengthened their marriage and they coach couples to do the same. And they are incredibly fun hosting swinger parties and travel groups and um, Carol's writing a screenplay called Sex, Love, and Jealousy, or both of you. Are you guys both working on that? Yes, I'm the writer, but David helps a lot. Okay, great, great. So amazing sex positive influences, influencers to a wide audience, and thank you for being here today. We're so excited to be talking about the swinging lifestyle on your show. Good. So, okay, why don't one of you start with, for those who don't exactly know what a swinger is, or what a swinger is versus polyamory versus, you know, some other relationship choices. Why don't you give your definition of what, what swinging is to you? I'll let you take that, hon. <laughs> well, we like to say that we are, first of all, that our relationship, we are monogamously, emotionally monogamous in our relationship, but mm. we're non-monogamous when it comes to sex. And so the swinging lifestyle allows couples to explore their boundaries and push their limits and find a way that can make their lifestyle um, fun and exciting and uh, with other couples. So that's kind of what we do. One of the key words there is emotionally monogamous. I know. I was going to ask you about that. What does that actually mean or how does that work for you? We are in love with each other. We don't fall in love with other couples that we fuck. We fuck them because they are friends. They are people that we meet. Um, They're just like almost buying a new, like buying a new sex toy. It's just it it's adds like the play. excitement of our sex Fun. life. It is. It's play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I know, imagine, yeah. And we know that we go home with each other and we yeah. are in this for us. And every time we get into a swinging um, experience, it's to make our couple stronger. And yeah. you can't be a swinger if you're not a strong couple. No, I mean, it takes a lot of communication. And I mean, have, have do either of you ever worry? Because I can imagine a man saying like, wow, he's listening to the show. And he's like, yeah, sure. Well, that sounds awesome to, you know, have sex with other women or other people. But my wife is not going to go for it or my partner or so. 
I mean, there's a hundred questions I could ask you, but let's say the first one is, um, how did you both get into this and did one of you talk the other into it or was it something you both came to or did you meet after already starting to, you know, do this? One thing that's really, really important to tell your listeners is that in the swinging lifestyle, it's the woman that drives. She's the one that makes the decision. She's the one that decides, are we going or aren't we going? So there's this, this a perception out there that it's the man that pushes the woman into the lifestyle, but it doesn't work that way. It's really like Carol who says, okay, let's meet this couple. And you never take one for the team. So if it's not good for both of us, it just doesn't happen. Mm. And um, I mean, I just want to interject that very often it's the man who is the one who's discovered the swinging lifestyle in the first place and uh suggests it to the other partner. Mm -hmm. And they kind of maybe will get into it because he has suggested it. But it's really the woman who drives once you're into it. Now, your question, which was, how did we get into it? Mm -hmm. Is we have kind of a funny story because David's ex-wife is married to my (laughs) ex-husband. But but, but that had nothing to do with swinging. Right, exactly. We were not swingers at the time it kind of just like sings that way but we were dumped on the same day and we became very close friends mm. and fuck buddies for a yes. couple of years yeah and then after a couple of years david organized a vacation for us where we went to an adults only vacation in mexico where we just by chance happened to sit beside a couple on the beach who were swingers and we didn't know that we had never actually ever met a swinger before we can uh-huh. shout out to the our friends at Temptation sure, in Cancun. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so after sitting beside them, understanding what they're going through, we talk about we talked about all sorts of things. Hold on, hold on, close. hold on. Stop for a second. Okay. We sat on the beach. He was <laughs> massaging sunscreen into her tits. And yeah. you said, don't you ever think about doing that to me. <laughs> okay, that was I, day I, one. Don't that think about doing that story. to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah because you're not touching my kids I was in not public. a swinger at the time. I was just like, you know, a vanilla person and saying, wait a second, what's, what's going on over there? Oh, interesting. So anyways, so you were, okay. So this is good because I think this actually will help also men who are like, oh, my wife wouldn't be into this, that that's where you started, Carol. Yeah, absolutely. So we saw this happening in front of us and I thought something's going on over there. And David started but talking with But you were okay being topless on the beach. Oh and- yeah. Being topless on the beach, I was open to that. David rubbing sunscreen into my boobs at that time, nah, not so much. Mm-hmm. However, we did start discussing and giving uh, lots of information about what is the swinging lifestyle? How does it work? What do they do? Where do they go? They happen to be a European couple and they were very, very open with us. Mm-hmm. And, we just, and we we just absorbed all the information. Right. It, was, it was amazing. We had so many questions. Yeah. And we talked about it after. And so we had actually really good teachers. And the three days later, after talking with them every day, for they three said, days, would you guys be interested? <laughs> and we said, hmm, probably let's give it a try and uh-huh. so that was our very first swinger experience with that couple on the beach and then the next day we met another couple <laughs> and the day after we met another oh, it was like couple. the floodgate opened oh yes yes i mean yeah. when you're open-minded and you have a strong couple and a strong relationship and you're talking about it all day and then in, and you go back to your room and you say would we could we should we uh-huh. it really opens up that great dialogue about you know, what do we want for our relationship? And it was fantastic. And ever since then, we've never looked back. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And, and never looked back. Like, how was it after your first couple experiences? Was there jealousy? Was there any? Oh, no. No, no? absolutely not. It was such a fun experience and so like titillating is kind of got to be the word that we thought about right off the bat. There was a lot of titillation. (laughs) And it was just new to us. We were very sexually charged already. And so just talking about what we did, we did the playback. We said, wouldn't that be cool if we did this? And we had really the opportunity to uh, relax and talk about it. I think that was great for our relationship. And before I let Carol talk about the jealousy issue, one of the things that um, drives us in the lifestyle, and most lifestyle cu- uh, uh, couples, is the excitement. The and when you say a lifestyle couple, you mean a, a couple who's in the swinging lifestyle? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, see, swinging is only part of the lifestyle. The lifestyle is a much broader term, which you, is used to describe voyeurs, exhibitionists, and swingers. Okay. And swingers could be soft swap, where you actually don't have penetrative sex, or full swap, where you go all out and have uh-huh. Of sex. So really the lifestyle incorporates all four of those scenarios. Okay, thank you. And David, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just want that clarity. No, no. I, I just wanted to say that the excitement of being a swinger or being in the lifestyle is not knowing what that other person or people or couple 
are going to bring to the experience. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it's really about the newness, the, the excitement that drives our couple and our relationship. And, you know, we're going uh, soon on a lifestyle cruise, an Alaskan cruise. And it's, we're so excited to be meeting new people. And Carol gets to wear outfits that she wouldn't wear at your local Dunkin' Donuts and heels. <laughs> and I mean, the, the, the theme nights are, are so spectacular. But it's really about our couple and strengthening it. Now, I know you had a question about jealousy, and I can't answer it as well as Carol can because she's, you know, she's the best in our relationship. <laughs> so, yeah, we get asked a lot of questions because what, what we call ourselves experts in the swing lifestyle, but a lot yeah. of people ask us questions, and almost always the very first question is, do you feel jealousy in the lifestyle mm-hmm. when you take your husband or your partner with somebody else? And so the first thing we have to say is that if you're not in a very, very strong, committed couple, you cannot be in the lifestyle. It yeah. just doesn't work that way. Yeah. But if you feel comfortable with your partner and you know your partner loves you mm-hmm. and wants to be with you and you're just out there to experience something new and something fun, something exciting, then whether you have um, a little fleeting moment of jealousy when you see your your partner out there doing something with someone else, it just passes very quickly and you don't even notice it basically. But well, you have a good interesting. example I mean, that. Because I have to say, I've been around a lot of people and I've had, you know, many different experiences of relationship types myself and, um, and seen a lot of people. And actually, you're the first couple I've heard who said, oh, that jealousy just kind of passes you by. So I don't know if there's a way that you're doing it that's really working or if I've just met, you know, many other people or experienced more jealousy myself. But I mean, A, I, I want to just normalize it for other people that, you know, you might feel jealous, whether you're a man or a woman or any gender, you might feel jealous. But I'm also really curious about how it is that you guys have escaped the realm of jealousy. No, jealousy is a natural reaction and it, it is there. But like I said, it just comes and goes in a fleeting moment when you're in a very strong and confident relationship. When you know your partner's going home with you and that you're there just to have fun, Mm -hmm. you don't worry about that. So it's really the mindset. It's really about that type of person who has that mindset is the one who's going to succeed in the lifestyle. And if not, it's not for you. Absolutely. We like to say that the lifestyle is for anyone, but it's not for everyone. Right. That's actually a really great point. I mean, I could see people newly experimenting and trying it out and feeling a lot of jealousy and then being like, huh, maybe, you know, maybe I'm not evolved enough. Maybe I'm not good enough, but actually maybe it's just not the right thing for a person's nervous system. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, and Shana, however, you know, you have couples who think their sex life is okay. You know, uh, if they're having sex once a month, I have some friends who have sex once a year, they think that's normal. And, you know, you get into a relationship where, you know, we know a sexless marriage is sex less than 10 to 12 times a year, which is once a month. And, you know, one cup, one person in the couple might say, ah, you know what? I want to improve my sex life. Why don't we try swinging? Why don't we go to a club or, or a resort and see if we can get more sex? And this couple is going to crash and burn mm. because they don't have a great sex life. They don't have the communication. If you're only having sex once a month, you guys aren't talking about sex. You know, talking about yeah. sex is the thing. Do you want to fuck tonight? It's about what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? Make the environment, make the experience. A couple should be having sex two to three times a week in a healthy, very uh, fruitful uh, couple. Yeah. But they I mean, also and, should and everyone's talk. different, but I really love that you're pointing out like, okay, there's, there's discussion about it. What do you want? What do you like? What feels good to you? How could we feel closer, more intimate, right? If you can't talk about it, then it is, it's a, a kind of crash and burn is inevitable if you're then going to go try and have sex with other people and not feel connected already yourselves. Absolutely. And Carol has a, a great example of a little bit of jealousy she experienced the first time she saw me fucking someone else. Yeah, that was a while ago when we first started in the swinging lifestyle where, you know, our rule is that we stay together. We play only together. Same Mm. room, same bed, same pile. And we love foursomes and moresomes. Right. So when there's an orgy going on and there's lots of stuff going on, you're enjoying the moment and things are happening and everything's going on. And one particular time, uh, I timed out. I had enough. Okay, I'm taking a break. And I kind of sat on the couch where 
uh, I could look down at the whole orgy going on in front of me and David continued to play, which was fine. I was still in close proximity to him mm -hmm. and I was watching him. And for the very first time I saw him fucking another woman. Yeah. And it was just a different point of view than being in it, in the situation I'm looking down from. From the couch. It was like this. Because yeah. most couples don't see each other yeah. having sex, right? <laughs> At that kind I mean, of even when you're inside of that, you're not watching each other. No. Well, you're, you're there, it. you're seeing things happen, but you're not looking down on a situation, uh -huh. which, you know, and you're engaged yourself of yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 So uh, that was the very first experience I had. And for a moment, I'd certainly felt jealous. I mm -hmm. felt that you know, welling of jealousy coming up in me. And I, and then I said, okay, wait, what is this all about? Why am I feeling jealousy right now? Yeah. And so talking myself through it, I said, okay, this is, this is what we do. This is how we do it. And I'm just looking at it in a different way. And it was actually a great experience for me. And from that moment on, I didn't have that kind of overwhelming jealousy ever again, because I got it. You know, this is just a different point of view of how I look at things. And so it was actually a good exercise. Huh. Okay. So wait, what did you get in that moment? I kind of felt an overwhelming jealousy of seeing Kim with um, another woman. And it wasn't even the fucking part. It was the kissing part. Right. It, was, it was fucking and kissing at the same uh -huh. time. Uh -huh. And I just thought, oh, wait a second. Why am I feeling like this? I know that he's coming home with me tonight. I know that he loves me. Yeah. And I know he likes to kiss. And it's very much part of our experience when we are having sex with somebody else. We do a lot of kissing. Not all couples do, but we certainly do. Mm -hmm. And so just viewing it from that point of view, um, but I certainly got over it. And uh, I mean, that was eight or nine years ago now. So I certainly did get over it and it yeah. never stopped me going forward. Well, it sounds like though you were able to come back to, I know he loves me. We feel really connected. Whereas what you were saying before, you know, if there's a couple who is trying to save their marriage or um, save their sex life in a way through swinging, right? I could imagine having a lot of jealousy and a lot of upset, which on the one hand, could be a really good thing. It could you, lead to... But, but you, can't, you, know. you can't come into a swinging situation if you're trying to save a broken marriage. Right. You know, I was going to say, that doesn't work. Lot worse. The whole thing will be highlighted and, and blown out of proportion. Yeah. Not out of proportion, just blown to the moon. Yeah. So you can't fix something in the swinging lifestyle. The, to be a swinger is to enhance an already strong relationship. Yeah, which is great. I mean, you know, in, in this theoretical per example, which we know would crash and burn, there's a way that I could see a couple kind of, you know, dipping into the swinger lifestyle, things blow up, but then they're actually willing to talk about it like, oh, I miss you. I want you. I, you know, I resent you, all these things. Um, but I get, right, that that's not going to work. And um one of the things you said, David, is that actually we do this, I can't remember how you phrased it, but I'm curious. It was like, we do this for our relationship or to, to strengthen our relationship. Is that what you said? Absolutely. Yeah, yes, yes. Absolutely. But one of the things I could add in here is that any couple who is actually interested in, I say, putting their toes in, testing the water, putting their toes into it, we always tell them to go with baby steps. I mean, yes. we're already full swap swingers oh, and we've gone through those steps. But anybody who is interested and does not quite sure if it's going to work or not, they just try a little bit. Maybe they'll go to a swinger club and watch somebody else having sex in front mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. How does that make them feel? But as long as they're discussing it afterwards and debriefing what they saw, what they liked, what they didn't like, what made them feel anxious, and then make their decision, do we go forward or mm -hmm. not, based on what they saw, then they're actually already doing the right thing for their couple. So you can definitely get into the lifestyle without having sex with somebody else, without ever touching anybody else mm -hmm. and feeling it out and seeing how you might react in that situation. Going slowly is the best way anyway. And, and Shana, like you said earlier on, you know, communication in, just in relationships in general is so important. But in the lifestyle, in a swinging situation, it is like mission critical. And yeah. one of the things that we always tell people is shit happens. Yeah. You know, there is going to be stuff that you didn't talk about before that's going to happen that someone's going to do maybe again and again. And I'm talking about myself here because <laughs> I always get in trouble. You do? And all that, that, oh, yes. yes, yes I'm, oh, you know. okay. He's exaggerating. He's learned his lessons these days. But uh, at, the beginning, at the beginning, it was a little tough. But mm -hmm. all that does is it creates an excuse for Carol and I to have even more communication and right. talk about the 
how come you did that? Why didn't you bring me? Why didn't? And all that good stuff. And, and one of the biggest rules in the lifestyle is probably number three. Number one is, you know, ask first. And number two is no means no. But number three is if you're going into a swinging situation together, you can't hold it against each other if shit happens. Mm. Interesting. Only because you're trying, you're trying to explore a new way of enhancing your relationship and you're in it together. Right. And if it doesn't work out, then you have to work it out together right. and say, well, that didn't work or this was great or that wasn't so great. And right. as long as yeah. you're talking. I would imagine, I mean, you, you inevitably cross certain lines that you didn't know you had. And Cause you don't, yeah, because right. you don't and know then, what you don't know. Yeah. Right. And you, and you see a lot of things that you can never even <laughs> imagine happen that are happening in front of you. Like, forget about porn. This is like live, real reality right. going on. And, you know, I'll give you a great example. We were playing in, in a hotel room and there was like 15 other couples there. And two girls came up to me and said, hey, you know, we want to do you together. And I said, hell yeah. And I went over there. And five minutes later, Carol's like, David, where were you? You didn't tell me where you're going. And right. Like, well, I, I, they wanted me. And so that created a conversation. And next time it was like, okay, two girls, three girls came to say, you, you know, we want to play with you. But I went to get Carol and I said, why don't you come with us? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So that's, I mean, that's, I'm imagining, right? That's some of the ways you get in trouble. But, right. It sounds like you have a way of being able to have those conversations where neither one of you is attacking the other or shaming the other and saying, you know, I don't know. Does that happen where you kind of get pissed and say, no, you? not at all. Yeah. Because if, the, if that kind of drama is what's causing you to have conflict in your marriage, then you're definitely not a candidate for the lifestyle. So, yeah, you yeah. know, the lifestyle is, is not for everyone. And if you are a jealous type or if you don't have those communication skills, then it's just not for you. So that's, it's okay. It's not for everyone. So it yeah. doesn't have to be. There's other ways to enhance your lifestyle. There's other ways to enhance your love life, I should say, and spice up your sex life doesn't have to be the swing lifestyle. No, but it's it's really, I mean, it's affirming in a way to hear you talk about that there is such a foundation of communication and respect and, um, you know, being a, a united front in a way. Yeah, respect is such a key word. I'm glad you brought it up. Because like I said earlier, you, you never take one for a the team. So, you know, if we're in a situation and this gorgeous woman just is, is there for me, and if Carol's not into the guy, it's just doesn't happen. We move on. Yeah. And so you do you only play with couples? Always. That's our rule. Uh, mm -hmm. not, not everybody's rule in the lifestyle, but for yeah. us to enhance our couple, we decided that we want to do it together. Mm -hmm. So we always choose a couple. Unless she's a Playboy model, and then, <laughs> then, then we discuss. And we have Only on the next year birthday, oh. David. Right. Only on my birthday. Kid, or if it was someone, you'd get a free pass. Or <laughs> Yeah, on special <laughs> occasions, perhaps. Yeah, Carol has her favorite pilot. <laughs> Every now and again, you do indulge. But, you know, it's, all, it's about that communication. It's like, okay, you know, what can we do a little bit different? You know, we were like we're going on luxury lifestyle vacations, Alaskan cruise, and we're going to be there with a whole bunch of couples. And when we come home, you know, Carol might want a single guy or I might want a single girl. And we talk about it. It's a treat for us. But um, it's that conversation that keeps um, our discussion so um, lively. Yeah. And, and, and every, every night we talk about stuff. Spicy. Yeah. I love yeah. that word. Mm-hmm. How would you suggest, I mean, it, it is interesting because I think in some ways the men I work with um, usually they're either single and wanting to be in a relationship or if they're in a relationship, usually they come to me because there are these, you know, struggles um, in their sex life or in their intimacy. And so, so um, in some ways the clients I've worked with may not necessarily be the best fit for this, but I guess a question would be, you know, if a man's listening to this and he's like, oh, I could be a candidate for this lifestyle or this way, how would you suggest he bring that home to his partner? Well, it's very possible that if, you, if he's single and he meets another woman and she might be open to this kind of thing to spice up their sex life mm -hmm. right from the beginning. And if they decide that that's the angle they want to go, our advice is basically take baby steps, small yeah. baby steps. Uh, but if it's not the case where they're single and they're actually in a relationship and they do want to try something new, it's almost the same way. You have to take your baby steps. What so, are some baby whatever, steps you suggest? 
Okay, so there's lots of ways to uh, open your mind and find out what's going on in the lifestyle. One of the things they, they can do, and there's lots of resources out there, like our website, thesexylifestyle.com, mm-hmm. is go do some research and do it together. It's, it's one of the, the fun things that Carol and I did, and we won't get into the dating sites where you can meet other couples which are specific for swinging and, and the lifestyle, but go get information. There's tons of information on our site. There's going to be this show. We've done tons of uh, shows with uh, couples related to swinging, but get that information because it's almost like watching porn, and you're going to look at it together and say, well, what do you think about that? Would we? Could we? Should we? Mm-hmm. And you open that dialogue, and then from that, you're going to find maybe you want to go to a club, maybe you want to go to a weekend away, maybe you want to go to a whole week vacation to a desire in Cancun or a hedonism in, um, in Jamaica and ask questions. There's so many resources out there. We have Dr. Jessica O'Reilly, um, uh, Emily Morse, uh, ourselves. Send us an email. We're always open to asking questions, even yourself, Shane. I'm sure if people asked you a question, you can answer. And if you didn't, yeah. you direct them to someone else. But ask those questions before you go, and then once you go, I'll let Carol talk about the limits. And, and Well, one of the things that happens and very, very often in this type of uh, situation is that the guy wants a threesome or the girl wants a threesome. Uh-huh. Either way, it doesn't matter. But where do you find that third party? I mean, that's in a vanilla world, which is a non-swinging world. Where do you find a third party to participate in a threesome? And Who's that's emotionally not so- mature enough. And- right. And it's just, it's like no strings attached, right? right? You just want them for that sexual encounter and that's it. It's not about building a relationship or dating them again. Mm-hmm. It's where would you find a willing partner to come in and participate? That's so a great question. In this, yeah, exactly. So in the lifestyle, there are definitely ladies or men who are singles who want to participate with a couple. It's a very safe environment for them to have a great sexual encounter. So if that is the fantasy that they want to fulfill, then there are dating sites for that. So Like, for, like SDC.com? Sure, there's one. That's SDC.com is one. Um, and yeah, if they want to get on there and meet other Um, put up their profile and say, I'm interested in a threesome. And if there's a single girl or a single guy, whoever it might be. Or a couple looking for a single guy or a single woman. Either way. You can find it the same way. Exactly. So I can remember many years ago when we were still, when I just met David, he did want to have a threesome. And in my life, I had no idea where I would possibly come up with a third party Mm -hmm. to have a threesome with him. But of course, as soon as we got into lifestyle, we, we have had many threesomes, foursomes, moresomes, many, many more than that. Carol did arrange five women for my 50th birthday. Right. Wow. Birthday present. Exactly. And, and as, as cool as that sounds, just so <laughs> yeah. everybody out there lives in reality, five women on one guy really doesn't work. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a lot space. to manage and handle. So actually, talk a little bit about that because it could be a fantasy. And then when you bring the reality in, right, it can be... Right. Right. Well, David was blindfolded and handcuffed at the time because that was part of his fantasy. And Carol was the sixth. So there's women and hands and everything all over. I mean, it felt great. However, you know... um, It's not really a whole lot you can do there. It was really fun. It was a lot of fun. The ladies took turns and uh, made sure his fantasy came true for his 50th birthday, which was... But what would you say, David? So so just so we can dispel some of that fantasy of like, oh, the more women, the better, maybe, right? For... For some men, what was there something about it for you that was overwhelming or that didn't work? Well, no, it was amazing. No, no, it all worked completely. I worked really hard. You know, this was my birthday, but I worked hard. <laughs> That's what I, I would think. A- you would have to work really hard with five women. Well, no, I had a woman sitting on my face. I had to please her. There was one sitting on my cock. I had to keep moving. Then there was two girls kissing each other and and playing with my balls. And it's like, okay, all this is going on. I'm blindfolded. I'm trying to keep track of everything. Then they're switching. It's like, okay, who's on my cock? Who's on my face? So it was really fun. I was was, taking photos. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So So really fun and a lot of work, it sounds like. It is. But, you know, Shana, you brought up this fantasy thing and fantasies are such an important part of any couple or any relationship, whether you're going into swinging or not. Or whether you're going to fulfill them or not. It doesn't matter. But it's, again, talking about what I like, what I'd like to do. I mean, on our radio show, um, our show with you was absolutely fantastic. I hope everybody has a chance to listen to it. Mm. But um, we, we always talk about these fantasies and couples who really don't communicate. You know, there's this, this couple who's been married 20 years. And of course, guys, they always want to have a threesome. And then one day he brings it up to his wife and says, you know, I'd really like to have a threesome. And she goes, you know what? 
it's been 20 years I want to talk to you because I want to have a threesome too. And it's like, mm. well, why didn't you guys talk about this stuff? And that's why, you know, when you open um, this, this podcast with the fact that communication is so important in couples, in relationships, in swinging, it's so true. Yeah. You have to have those open lines of communication. You can't just put stuff in boxes and hope it goes away or hope that this fantasy comes true later By on. By itself without any effort it's at not all. Gonna, yes. It's not going to happen. No. And, and, you know, the baby steps, right? I mean, sometimes I, I actually have a guide for couples to start talking about fantasies because I, I believe right there, some of the fantasies are sexual. Some of them are just more intimate and heart-based. I mean, we can have so many kinds of fantasies and we can be, a lot of people can have a shyness or a fear of bringing them up and then sometimes can bring them up, bring them up in a really, um, disconnected way, right? Or a really abrupt way instead of actually sitting down and setting a, a kind of container for this conversation that could be, you know, like you said, you guys don't experience a ton of jealousy, but there's a lot of people who get jealous out there. Or if, if this has never been a conversation as your first conversation, you've been married for 10 or 20 years, you know, suddenly a woman might say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And she might, you know, want to hit you. And either one is a totally possible reaction, right? And, yes, it's, and, it's, and it's so important when you bring up these fantasies to not diss your partner. If it's something they bring up that's not yeah. yes. good for you, well, find that happy medium. Bring up something that might be acceptable for you. You know, just Negotiation. missionary uh-huh. position on your bed every night for 20 years or once a month for 20 years is going to get stale and boring. You have yeah. to do things differently. You have to spice it up. And yeah. I, can't, I can't say it often enough that you do not have to fulfill your fantasies. You can talk about them. You can make them part of your sexy life, yes. because, your sexy sex life, because it does add the passion, but it's not a requirement to fulfill them. So you have to keep your mind open when you hear your partner's fantasy that it doesn't mean just because they want it or they, they mention do it. it. It doesn't mean you have to do it. But it's, it's opening that dialogue. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think um, there's a huge difference when we talk about communication, right? There's a difference when you hear your partner speak a fantasy and you have, you know, your heart starts to panic or something. There's a difference between saying like, wow, I feel really scared versus that's disgusting or I would never do right. that. Exactly. And what we like to say is you never yuck somebody else's yum. And yes. that's, That's just a good rule to remember. Yeah. Right. And And that there are some fantasies that, you know, are, are, are actually exciting and tantalizing in the fantasy realm and don't ever necessarily need to be acted out. And then some where it's like, oh, that feels far beyond where I would go. But this, like you said, David, like, oh, this would work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes fantasies within your couple don't involve swinging. They don't involve alternative lifestyle. I mean, we love, we can do a whole show on how you can bring toys into um, Mm -hmm. a couple. But sometimes it's just about a candle. It's just about some massage oil. It's about music. It's about doing something different. It's about a feeling rather than a physical. that ambiance, exactly. Mm -hmm. A silk sheet. I don't know. I love when Carol just puts on heels and we were naked and we're fucking and she's just wearing high heels in bed. Mm -hmm. You know, some women don't even have high heels. You, you don't have to wear them on the street. Just wear them in bed. <laughs> That's yes. a typical guy talking right there, right? I am a typical guy. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been awesome. I feel like you've given a really good introduction to the lifestyle and also to, uh, you know, really pointing to the health, the kind of ground of health and the communication it takes to make it happen. And what would you say you want to leave people with? Well, I have to say that if you have a fantasy, at least talk about it, whether you're willing to fulfill it or she's willing to follow it through, whatever it might be, you need to talk about it. If it is something that you want to do where you want to try, whether it's exhibitionism or voyeurism or even swinging, so try it, but talk about the feelings, what you liked, what you didn't like, could we, should we, would we? Those are good questions. And women realize that you can bring up the conversation as well it's really when we when we really get into the lifestyle and get into the people it's really the women who are inquisitive 
And it's not the men pushing the women into it. It's the women wanting to experience more. And sometimes they're a little afraid to bring it up to their husband because they don't know how their husband will react. Mm. So bring up something I read in an article. I listened to Carol and David's show on the sexylifestyle.com. I listened to Shana. And what do you think about this? And that's a great way to open up that dialogue. Mm. I love it. I love it. And I really do appreciate to the the way you're talking about this being woman led and it's not to say that it couldn't be you know led by a man but there's something about um who whoever is the one who's more hesitant or the one who's slower right in the process to actually honor that and to find ways to have each other feel safe yeah, absolutely mhm yeah, that's the way. And talking about it is the only way to do it. Sharing yeah. feelings, sharing ideas, uh, sharing dreams and adding that passion back into your relationship. That's what it's all about. Mm. Thank you so much. And where can people go to find you? Well, our website is the sexy lifestyle.com. And anybody can send an email at ask at carolyndavid.com. And we're all over social media on The Sexy Lifestyle, on Carol and David. Just search us everywhere. We have a new talk radio network coming up called The Sexy Lifestyle Talk Radio Network. It's on our website. So lots of good things. Hopefully, Shana, will have you on our show, on our network. You are an absolutely amazing person. You bring Aww. so much education and information to males out there who might be a little hesitant to talk to someone. We love you, and we want to keep in touch. and. Yeah have you on our show and we'll be back on your show anytime you like. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thanks, Shana. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related, and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.